Good morning. This is Wednesday, September the 23rd, 2015. Reading from My Utmost for Its Highest. Today's uh, devotion is entitled The Missionary's Goal. On the way over from Linden, I, uh, I mean, from <laughs> where am I? On the way over from Pittsburgh, <coughs> I listened to uh, two sermons. One was on a teaching on uh, living a cross centered life, and the other was uh, the end times as told, as discussed with Jesus. And uh, so the cross and the end were on my mind and I was thinking I bet <laughs> God's going to bring it home again and today uh, in the uh, my, my utmost here it is the missionary's goal what is our destination what is our end and uh, Luke eighteen thirty one is the scripture behold we go up to Jerusalem and the picture of the cross, uh, the old rugged cross. So that's what we're in store for today, in some way, is we're going to Jerusalem. And the Jerusalem that we go to is very much like what Jesus, when he set his face to go to Jerusalem, where his disciples, particularly Peter, did not want him to go, but before him was Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, there were two things awaiting. Uh, the cross, with all its beatings and mockering. And, uh, but then also the joy. Jesus went for the joy but he had to endure the cross to get to the joy. We all love the thought of living the resurrected life, but all resurrections require a cross, a death. So Jesus calls us today to salvation, which is resurrection, but at the same time he calls us to a death. A living sacrifice. Let's see what uh, Oswald, what the Lord has to say through Oswald's writing. In the natural life, our ambitions alter as we develop. In the Christian life, <laughs> the goal is given at the beginning. The beginning and the end are the same. Are the same, meaning our Lord himself. We start with Christ and we end with him until we all attain to the stature of the manhood of Christ Jesus, not to our idea of what the Christian life should be. The aim of the missionary is to do God's will, not to be useful, not to win the heathen, he is useful and he does win the heathen, but that is not his aim. His aim is to do the will of his Lord. In our Lord's life, Jerusalem was the place where he reached the climax of his Father's will upon the cross. And unless we go with Jesus there, we will have no companionship with him. Nothing ever discouraged our Lord on his way to Jerusalem. He never hurried through certain villages where he was persecuted or lingered at others where he was blessed. Neither gratitude nor ingratitude turned our Lord one hair's breadth away from his purpose to go up to Jerusalem. The disciple is not above his master, says Jesus. The same thing will happen to us on our way to our Jerusalem. 
there will be the works of God manifested through us. People will get blessed and one or two will show gratitude and the rest will show gross ingratitude. But nothing must deflect us from going up to Jerusalem. There they crucified him. That is what happened when our Lord reached Jerusalem, and that happening is the gateway to our salvation. The saints do not end in crucifixion. By the Lord's grace, they end in glory. In the meantime, our watchword is, I too go up to Jerusalem. And reading from So Send I You, a book by Oswald Chambers, we are not to preach the doing of good things. Good deeds are not to be preached. They are to be performed. And the hymn that came to mind was the words written by Isaac Watts, When I Surveyed the Wondrous Cross. Charles Wesley, who wrote close to four or five thousand hymns, reportedly said that he would give up all his other hymns to have written this one. And the music is by Lowell Mason of 1824. Sorry, my nose is stuffy. I think I have a gluten sensitivity and I <laughs> have recommended so many go on a gluten-free diet and I must surrender to that fact as well. <laughs> uh, Carrie, if you're listening, pray for me and give me words of wisdom how I can get this gluten-free diet going. I like my bread. All right. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss, and I pour contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most I sacrifice him to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? His dying crimson, like a robe, spreads o'er his body on the tree. Then I am dead to all the globe and all the globe is dead to me. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were at present far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And added by the compilers of hymns of ancient and modern, another verse, to Christ, who won for sinners grace by bitter grief and anguish sore be praised from all the ransomed race forever and forevermore. I'll attempt to sing the first verse. <laughs> when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. One of the things that we will experience as we go to Jerusalem and go through our cross is the experience of moving closer to Jesus. One of the teachers from this morning read and quoted uh, Psalms 23. 
he had heard a sermon by a missionary who prior to being called to Romania where he's been a missionary his wife was diagnosed, diagnosed with a, uh, an aggressive brain tumor and in a few short months was dead, leaving he and their four children here on planet Earth. And this minister, this uh, missionary, taught on the Psalms 23. And he makes a distinction at what point the psalm went from third person to first person, making the implication of when Jesus draws close. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You see, that's in the third person. Now listen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod <laughs> and thy staff, they comfort me. You see, it went to the first person. From talking about who Jesus is to talking, communing, fellowshipping with Jesus. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> Are you being called to Jerusalem today? You know what stands in Jerusalem across. But don't let that deter you because what really stands beyond the cross is resurrection and joy. And you can say to Jesus, for thou art with me. <laughs> thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Really, Jesus, you are going to put me in the presence of my enemies? You're going to call me to my enemies? And you're going to prepare a table, a feast, abundant life in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. You will supply all my needs. More than enough. You will not withhold a single spiritual blessing. Your anointing means your blessing. Your anointing means my healing. My cup runneth over. <laughs> Drink from the spring that will never run dry. <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name, amen.